All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and we have pretty much wrapped up our entire coaching staff. We still got to worry about, like, training staff and things like that, and you never know. I didn't expect us to hire an assistant GM out of nowhere like that, so maybe we're, we, we're not quite done with the front office side of things, but it looks like we're done with the coaching staff side, especially after the hires that we're going to talk about in this video. I plan on doing, like, a full breakdown, review, and grade of, the, of our entire coaching staff as a whole because i feel like now looking back like with all everybody already in place how do we feel about each hire it's probably different than when we hire people in our immediate reactions to those so i'm gonna do like a full breakdown and review that's probably gonna come out later today as in friday february 16th but right now we're excited about the washington commander still in apparently a great staffer from the falcons that the falcons are pretty sad to lose at quite the last second as well the washington command has also hired a celebrity actor to the coaching staff that's fun washington also added two x stillers players to the coaching staff ryan clark may have had something to do with that and also brian johnson won the assistant head coach title which is really interesting i thought that would more than likely go to an anthony lynn or like the offensive coordinator or the defensive coordinator it's pretty interesting that the passing game coordinator has it but we're going to talk about what that potentially means and then we're also going to talk about why it's being reported from Nikki Javala exactly why he was awarded the assistant head coach title. Does that mean he has more power than the our offensive coordinator and Cliff Kingsbury who doesn't have it? Again, we're going to dive into all of that and more. But before we do, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned for all of the content. Again, I'm really excited about a lot of the hires that we made but i'm also almost just as excited about it being over with so we can just purely focus on free agency and draft because these videos take up so much time to make between the research the editing i just can't wait to where i'm just doing off-season mock drafts free agency my like my top five free agents at each position of need and my dream case scenario free agency my most realistic free agency case scenario all that type of stuff then getting into the draft i'm working on more mock drafts for us the one that i'm probably going to do the next uh is probably going to be like a trade back one. i'm still working on my cliff kingsbury theme mock draft so we can get players that fit his air raid scheme and system to the best of its ability get the most out of it and all of that type of stuff so i have so many ideas we still haven't even started the film sessions for draft prospects yet so many things to get to but it was just so hectic in commander's land with all of the hires that we had going on in the coaching staff in the front office which is a great thing i'm very happy but i'm also happy to move on so we can focus on my favorite part of the off season and that's the team building for agency and draft i mean we're less than a month away from free agency starting and then the combine we have i mean i'm so excited pro days all of that so man without wasting more of y'all time let's go ahead and get to this video right now before i get ahead of myself and get too excited let's get it All right, so the Washington Commanders officially like announced all of the final hires, like everybody that's on this coaching staff, what their titles are and everything like that. And I was looking at it like, who are these couple of people? There's a few new names on there that we never got like an individual announcement. Like, oh, hey, look, we hired this guy to do this with this title. We hired this person to do that and things like that. They kind of just put out the whole entire list of all of our hires coaching staff wise again we don't know the final like front office and i'm not sure if we have anybody in the health department in the the training staff yet we have tim mcgrath the injury consultant for player wellness and all of that type of stuff but i mean he's more of like a consultant than like the actual head athletic trainer or anything like that so that's still really interesting we got to see and i'm gonna keep y'all updated on that as that starts to come out but i'm pretty sure that's not like a big priority for the commanders just yet so even if they do have some guys in mind or even if some guys are already hired 
it's not a priority for them to necessarily announce those and that shows because even some coaching hires that we've made they didn't just go out of their way to announce you don't have adam schefter out there tweeting about some of these ian rapaport dove climbing none of these guys are reporting on some of these hires that we're talking about today but i, I do still feel like they're pretty significant so we got to start with the first name that i noticed i was like wait who is sarah hogan she is apparently the coaching chief of staff and the first thing i saw was a guy by on twitter at by daniel flick he said falcons lose director of coaching operations sarah hogan to the commanders well she'll be coaching chief of staff during his introductory press conference raheem morris now currently the falcons head coach newly anointed falcons head coach was complimentary of hogan as well went out of his way to speak on her i don't even think he was asked about her he just brought her up and he said sarah is going to absolutely take us to the next level maybe he was asked about her, but out of the way i mean he was very complimentary towards her he sounded very excited to get to work with her and this was just like what a couple of weeks ago when he was announced the falcons head coach maybe like a little over a week ago um, and so for us to just i mean he was coming in like okay i'm the falcons head coach i'm gonna have this person as my right hand man to help me with a lot of the things behind the scenes and for her to just basically get swept up from under him does kind of have to suck for raheem morris i do feel a little sorry for him but as as much as i feel sorry for him i'm equally as excited about us gaining this person because by daniel flick said this is an underrated loss and i believe he's potentially yeah he's a falcons reporter so this is coming directly from a falcons reporter saying that the falcons losing sarah is a pretty underrated loss and basically as a commanders fan i take from that that we should be a little bit more excited about hiring her than a lot of us probably think we should be and this is a dan quinn connection through and through from his time with the falcons she's been there since dan quinn was there so she goes way back in the falcons organization she's one of the longest standing faces in that organization well now she's going to the commander so that's going to probably be a little weird for a lot of people that's used to work in there and for her not to be there that's that does have to be a little weird but in january 2016 dan quinn basically asked her and this is coming straight from her said if she wanted to help with some head coaching operations because his assistant that he had had left so she basically directly supported him and then her role expanded from there and she helped wherever she could the role was way different than it is now because she really wanted to take a lot of things off the coaches plates and everything like that so they could just focus purely on football and with dan quinn becoming the head coach here that's basically what she's coming here to do and she was basically the assistant director of coaching operations for the atlanta falcons going into the 2022 season and then she got a slight promotion to director of coaching operations for the atlanta falcons in 2023 and now she's coming here to help us on that side so this is technically a promotion for her i believe because dan quinn likes her just that much he has that much faith in her and again new falcons head coach raheem morris was that excited about working with her so i'm just gonna trust that she'll have a positive impact on this organization in any way possible again her whole role is to just allow the football guys do as much football stuff as possible she handles all of the tedious and annoying things that they would prefer not to deal with so she's basically allowing dan quinn to do what dan quinn wants to do as much as possible and i love that because he has a lot on this plate as well like we have this all-star calf of coaching hires front office guys and things like that it's up to dan quinn and adam peters to corral everybody and keep the chemistry going making sure everybody's opinions are being heard all responsibilities are clear and defined and everybody's being held accountable that's why he alleviated defensive play calling duties to joe witt jr he's allowing cliff kingsbury to call the offense and run that whole side of things he just literally wants to be the head coach and i have a person like sarah there to help with all of the behind the scenes things all of the tedious things he may not want to deal with is great man and again this is a promotion for her so it's basically a win-win for everybody and y'all know i'm the biggest falcon Sadie you'll probably meet out there so for us to steal somebody that the falcons really liked and add him or her to the commander staff i'm very excited just about that alone like that was the cherry on top the fact that we took her from the falcons if it was any other team i would still be pretty happy but the fact that it's the falcons makes me want to celebrate way louder than i probably should be also moving on it looks like we hired pete onegian and he's coming from being the cowboys 
quality control and defensive assistant to become our player development coach. Another person following Dan Quinn from the Cowboys to the Commanders. But this isn't the Washington Cowboys like we were the Washington Panthers under Ron Rivera. It's only a couple of guys coming from the Cowboys. Joe Witt Jr. And now we have Pete Onegian. And I believe there may be like one other person that's coming from the Cowboys. His name is slipping my mind right now. But that's it. This is not the Washington Cowboys. Don't get that confused. Now we may dip into the Cowboys roster and free agency to bring some guys, especially on the defensive side of the ball here. But you do not have to worry about this being the Washington Cowboys at all. The only time we'll bring people over, whether it be a coach or a player from the Cowboys, is if they're truly coming here to contribute to our winning and our success and helping us become a better franchise. And he's not just going to do it just to do it. Like Ron Rivera, it seemed like he was doing it more so because he was just comfortable with those coaches, those staff members, and those players. Dan Quinn's only doing it if that's literally just the best guy available, as he's shown. The majority of this coaching staff which he had a direct impact and a hand over all that entire thing between him and Adam Peters most of these guys are not coming from the Dallas Cowboys and have never coached for the Dallas Cowboys maybe not even played for the Dallas Cowboys so I love that from Dan Quinn he's keeping it open but at the same time man this man Onegian is pretty interesting because he's kind of somewhat of a celebrity he was the center for Washington in the replacements where he appeared alongside Keanu Reeves and then he also played the part of the Miami shark center in any given sunday starring al pacino and ll cool j and all of those guys jamie fox i'm willie beaming that movie and all of that stuff so that's pretty cool man and just to let you know doug williams is svp of player development so i'm guessing that pete is going to work under him and help around a little bit there um but i know a lot of people are probably questioning like what is a player development coach like what does that even mean what are you actually even doing and so basically they're here to literally develop the players but when we say that we're talking about things kind of off the field like more so developing their leadership skills their coachability skills their ability to like take in coaching to listen and then go and apply that on the practice um, field and in games locker room management culture all of that type of stuff a lot of the things that aren't like x's and o's a lot of the things that's you know, it's really hard to like quantify like this is the type of job where you can't really be judged on numbers or results. You're just hoping that it's working. It's just like a weird job because it doesn't necessarily affect what happens on Sundays like directly. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with, with, with whether we win or not on the field per se. But in a long run and a big round away about this whole situation, it kind of does. But either way, I'm just happy that this front office and coaching staff isn't overlooking any details, no matter how small. If there's any small role that we need accomplished, that we need somebody to be responsible for, to worry about every day and work their butts off to do the best that they can at achieving that really small task, I'm glad that we're going through and hiring some somebody to do it we're not just asking oh you know what well we already have this guy here doing this we might as well and just get go ahead and give him that role and that responsibility on top of what he's already doing no we're like no you focus on this you focus on this you focus on that and that's it you, I, we prefer for you to be elite at a couple of things or one thing rather than being a jack of all trades and being spread thin and i absolutely love that about this also moving on the washington commanders have hired a pair of former steelers players and i feel like ryan clark may have had something to do with that joe Wood jr is ryan clark's best friend joe Wood jr said it in his press conference yesterday ryan clark is literally his best friend and you know i, I don't think ryan clark is close enough to joe Wood jr and even just the fact that joe Wood jr is the defensive coordinator but of course ryan clark lsu big connection to Jaden daniels loves him taking a lot of pictures with him speaks very highly of him so i know ryan clark may have a little bit of influence over there but not enough for him to switch way us in the draft and Jaden Daniels if we draft Jaden Daniels it's because they already wanted Jaden Daniels it has nothing to do with Ryan Clark but it's really interesting to think that Ryan Clark may have at least had somewhat of an influence of over us hiring these pair of ex Steelers a pair of former Pittsburgh Steelers players were named to the Washington Commanders coaching staff as William Gay and Darnell Stapleton are joining head coach Dan Quinn's staff as their assistant DB's coach and William Gay and assistant offensive lines coach in Darnell Stapleton just to go ahead and give you that update right there and I'm really excited about what these guys may bring of course like I've already said 
hires outside of like head coach, defensive coordinator, defensive coordinator are already not like the most exciting, especially the casual fans. And then when you get even deeper to it, like we're not even just talking the offensive lines coach here. We're talking assistant offensive lines coach. We're talking assistant DBs coach. So it's kind of like how excited should we really be? But I I'm really interested in seeing what these guys may be able to provide to this coaching staff. And we're bringing them in for a reason. First of all, I find it very interesting that we finally announced assistant coordinating coaches for position groups where we kind of questioned the initial hire. Like Bobby Johnson in the offensive lines group as the offensive lines coach, we kind of questioned it a little bit. Well, look no further we brought in anthony lynn to be the run game coordinator i'm pretty sure he's going to be a huge help there for bobby johnson whether it's his fault or not for the giants he has big help in anthony lynn and then he's also going to have quite a bit of help from darnell stapleton being his assistant potentially and then we went out and also hired tommy donatel as our db's coach and then we already had jason simmons as the defensive passing game coordinator we already have joey jr as defensive coordinator dan quinn as the head coach so he was already surrounded by a lot of great coaches that should make his job easier even though i question the hire itself and tommy donatel but in addition to that we also brought in william gay to be the assistant db's coach and this is a guy that played at a pretty high level at in the nfl so if anything players will respect them remember william gay played cornerback for the steelers from 2007 to 2017 with a one-year break in 2012 when he briefly spent time with the arizona cardinals he was also briefly with the new york giants in 2018 but never appeared in a game he was part of the St steelers super bowl team that defeated the cardinals to bring a six lombardi trophy to the pittsburgh steelers he spent time on the steelers staff as a coach and intern in 2019 to break onto the coaching scene and was with missouri state as his db's coach in 2020 but most recently he was an analyst for the texas longhorns under head coach steve sarkeesian so basically my georgia bulldogs was having to going through recruiting battles with this guy so hey that's a little bit of respect right there i tip my hat towards that this will be his first time coaching in the nfl outside of the internship with the steelers so this is really interesting this is a big opportunity and for prom and promotion for him i'm pretty sure he's gonna do whatever it takes to make the most of it this is like his step to becoming a db's coach and then from there he could potentially become like a defensive passing game coordinator and then defensive coordinators after that so this could be the beginning of a very great career like i keep saying you never know if any of these random assistants that we're hiring may be like the next mike mcdonald defense or bobby sloak on offense you absolutely never know i'm not saying that they are that because again we don't have any real history here i just broke down his history and i still don't know if this guy's gonna be a good coach at all but i'm just saying don't overlook these hires at the very least keep them in the back of your mind so when we look back like from five years from now maybe one of these guys is one of those next top um head coaching candidates or defensive coordinator candidates or offensive coordinator candidates and william gay has the makeup of a guy that could potentially be that also again we hired stapleton to be our assistant offensive lines coach he made the steelers in 2007 as an undrafted free agent and stuck with the team for three seasons before playing in the ufl with the florida tuskers in 2010 after one year in the ufl he spent a couple of weeks on the new england patriots roster in the offseason before being waived so he hasn't been a guy that's played a lot but he's just one of those guys that when you ask around league circles he's one of those guys that people could tell that he has the potential to be a pretty good coach even though he wasn't really a good player a lot of people see a good coach in his future potentially he has held multiple coaches roles in different football leagues since finishing his playing career he was the head coach of the new york sharks a professional women's football team for one season before coaching the offensive line at a high school for a season then he spent time with various colleges including rutgers bucknell sam houston state louisiana and florida before heading back to the nfl with the commanders and we have a lot of florida gators on this roster man god lee is a georgia bulldog fan chill out dan quinn i know you coached for the florida gators at one point in time but chill out man god lee y'all got me out here looking crazy but just to let you know stapleton was florida's offensive lines coach for the past two seasons that was his most recent job and so i you know i <laughs> I don't really know how to, what to say on that because I don't necessarily feel like it was his fault that Florida's O-line wasn't that great these past couple of years. I feel like it was more so because they were just getting out-recruited by 
Alabama, Georgia, especially even Florida State, Miami out there getting five star offensive linemen from the state of Florida and Florida can't. So I, if anything, I more so blame the top of Florida's brass, like the head coach, all of their lead recruiters more than I blame Stapleton's for Florida's bad offensive line. So we'll see what he could do coming here to be the assistant offensive lines coach. I'm very intrigued by that. Next up, we also hired Shane Taub. I think Taub, Taub. I believe it's Taub as our offensive quality control coach. And he was hired here as a quality control coach last year. So technically, he's basically just being retained and kept. And maybe that is something significant there. The fact that they felt the need to retain him and keep him, maybe he showed a little something like, oh, okay, instead of bringing in our own guys, instead of doing some type of nepotism move, like I'm pretty sure one of these coaches on our staff, that like the linebackers coach and Kid Norton Jr. or Joe Witt Jr. is our defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn is the head coach. Somebody has a cousin. A close family friend somebody that they could bring in to do a job like that so for them to keep him says that they they clearly heard good things about him from the previous commander staff from last year so hey man maybe it's worth looking into and then also the washington commanders announced well you see it on their website with the official names and titles for every coach on the coaching staff andre coleman is our offensive assistant and I mean, really, the only information I could dig up was going to his Wikipedia and basically playing career wise. He was with Kansas State, the San Diego Chargers, the Seattle Seahawks, Pittsburgh Steelers, all as a wide receiver. And then coaching career wise, he was the wide receivers coach for Youngston State for a couple of years, then Kansas State for a few years. Then he was the offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach for Kansas State in 2018. Then he went to Texas as an analyst, and then he was the wide receivers coach for Texas from the 2020 season through the 2021 season. And then after that, I just can't find any information on him. That that's a super just we'll see i guess again this is not like a coaching title or responsibility is going to heavily impact whether we win games or not but i'm always combing through the details the smaller things because you never know remember bobby sloick was a defensive assistant for the washington commanders back on that 2013 elite legendary but extremely disappointed coaching staff that we just allowed everybody to leave we would allow mike mcdonald mike mcdaniels i believe he was like the wide receivers coach or the quarterbacks coach we let sean McVay go he was like a random coach on that on that team as well kyle shanahan ended up leaving matt lafleur was like a randoms coach like the tight ends coach or something like that i may be getting the titles wrong but you see what i'm saying bobby slug was like a defensive assistant not even offensive defensive assistant and then the texans just somehow found out with through bobby Slug look time with the 49ers and stuff like that that he could potentially be a great offensive coordinator and then the rest is history so again don't overlook a lot of these random guys that we have doing random things with random titles yeah i'm not gonna sit here and act like they're gonna have a heavy impact on what the commanders do this year or anytime in the near future but remember these names i'm basically just telling y'all to keep these names in your back pocket for if you randomly see these guys raising through the ranks if you notice that any of these names that we talk about in this video you see them just getting promotion after promotion every single year you may want to keep your eye on them but Again, these are guys not doing anything that will necessarily have a heavy impact on the commanders this year or really anytime soon. But again, this is Rico of Street Scores, so I got to announce every little thing that the Burgundy and Gold are doing. We also, speaking of announcements, have some official announcements from the Washington commanders themselves that we're still a little confused about at one point in time, but now we have full clarity. So, First of all, Anthony Lynn is officially the running backs coach on top of being the run game coordinator. We already knew he was the run game coordinator. And then a lot of us were saying that, yeah, he probably should just go ahead and be the running backs coach as well. Why not? He could definitely handle that. He's an ex-head coach. He's an ex-offensive coordinator. Him coming here to just basically just be a running backs coach and that's it. To basically do the same thing he, that he was doing for the Super Bowl 49ers they didn't win they lost but they went to the Super Bowl he has Christian McCaffrey in his running back room and he went and Trent Williams on his offensive line he wants to leave that to come here so I was assuming that it can't just be that now granted there's probably like an increase in pay or something like that also he's probably going to have more of an influence on what the offense does because it sounds like Cliff Kingsbury and Brian Johnson are going to be focused on the passing side Anthony Lynn is going to be controlling the running side so you could argue Anthony Lynn may actually have a little bit more control than even a Brian 
Johnson has, even though I'm excited about Brian Johnson being here to develop a quarterback we may potentially bring in here to be the guy. But Anthony Lynn, it just makes sense. To go from head coach a couple of years ago to being the running backs coach for a rebuilding commander's team, there's something behind that. So then they also gave him run game coordinator. I thought they would give him assistant head coach. We'll talk about that soon. But at the very least, he's run game coordinator, running backs coach, and I believe he can handle both roles very well. I've already done a video on him and his history with running backs and how literally exactly how many yards they had each season since he was their offensive coordinator or running backs coach or run game coordinator, head coach, all of that type of stuff. You can go check that out in another video. We're not going to do that in this video again because then we'll be here all, all day. Um, Secondly, Brian Johnson is the one that ends up with the assistant head coach title. And I thought that maybe Anthony Lynn made the most sense to me or even maybe the offensive coordinator in Cliff Kingsbury or the guy that's taken over your exact job that you did the past three years with Dallas and Joe Witt Jr. I, I thought with him being your right hand man and everything, I thought, especially the guy that you have the most chemistry with out of this entire coaching staff, I thought if anything, it would be Anthony Lynn. Cliff Kingsbury or Joe Witt Jr. I was very surprised to see that Brian Johnson ended up basically winning the assistant head coach title sweepstakes because I'm pretty sure everybody would love to have that on their name next to their responsibility and their title. Um, so I, again, I'm definitely surprised, but I don't think it really matters that much. But it is weird that the offensive passing game coordinator is the assistant head coach because it sounds like with a title like that, you have more power than anybody else like it sounds like his head coach and then assistant head coach but that's not how it's gonna be we're gonna dive into that really soon when when we break break down what Nikki Javala said but it does at the very least sounds like he does have a little bit more power than I thought he would originally have but we'll see um apparently that last part that I just said is not true about the power because Nikki Javala tweeted herself and reported though Brian Johnson has the assistant head coach tag Kingsbury will still retain full control of the offense so if Brian Johnson is the passing game coordinator as the assistant head coach and Cliff Kingsbury is still retaining full control not majority control full control of the offense it sounds like the assistant head coach title does not automatically put him directly under Dan Quinn on the hierarchy for all of the coaching staff the tag she says is more to give Johnson more experience with the organizational side and the things head coaches handle that may help set him up for future head coaching opportunities and I think that's really interesting so that's basically Dan Quinn and the commanders doing Brian Johnson a favor like hey man we'll name you assistant head coach you you can put that on your resume we'll also give you some experience in that field doing a lot of the behind the scene things that it basically grooming you into a potential great head coach we already know you're probably out the door anyway we might as well do the best job that we can to get you prepared for that so do us a favor do a great job at developing our quarterbacks and designing our passing game helping cliff kingsbury and all of that collaborating with anthony lynn and we're going to do you a favor we're going to hold our half of the bargain and allow you to be the assistant head coach and basically kind of shadow dan quinn to a sense and, and learn a lot of the head coaching things so that you can be ready to go when you're ready to go you'll be ready to go because i'm pretty sure right now ben johnson wished he was the assistant head coach so he would have some of that experience under his belt and i think Shouts out to my boy Resh Manuel. I completely agree. This is a very smart setup. Most assistant head coaches are either also position coaches or special teams coaches or not the primary offensive play caller. This is a great way to build up Brian Johnson's exposure to the head part of the head coach to get both Lynn and Johnson and give Brian Johnson the assistant head coach and title is actually really impressive. And that's the part I want to focus on the most. Shouts out to Resh Manuel for that because I completely agree. How do you recruit Anthony Lynn over here from the 40? Niners and Brian Johnson like it just seems like we have too many chefs in the kitchen and the fact that Anthony Lynn is like yeah Brian Johnson could take that assistant head coach title I just want to come here and do the run game coordinator and be the running backs coach that's it that's very impressive Anthony Lynn would not do that if he didn't believe in the vision of what the commanders are building right now so I'm very optimistic about what we got going on because you can tell by all of these ex-head coaches all of these ex-defensive coordinators and offensive coordinators coming here to basically take on smaller roles to basically essentially take demotions to come here and even some guys like Larry Izzo and Jason Simmons are literally making lateral moves to come here like you could just tell everybody's buying in i'm super excited now 
we also got to wait to get the training staff handled. I mean, af head athletic trainer, strength and conditioning coach, all of that. But I am very optimistic that they will find the right guys. I mean, at the very least, not hire a guy that gets raided by the DEA. Even though that wasn't Ron Rivera's fault, that's still hilarious, man, if that went down during his regime. And remember, we already have my boy, Tim McGrath, as the injury consultant of player wellness and sports science. And I already broke down his role and why I'm so excited about his hiring and his influence on the team in like a whole 30-minute video back in like December, I believe. So I'm confident that... He will help us hire the right guys if he's a part of that process. I'm not worried about the training staff at all. I think when we finally do start to announce those hires and we finally start to get those leaks, they will be guys that we'll be excited about. Or at the very least, they'll be like guys we're not, no we don't really know much about. Like a lot of these hires that we talked about in this video. But at the end of the day, I'm giving this coaching staff and this front office the benefit of the doubt with everything that they do until they show me they don't, they no longer deserve it. But also now looking back, I told y'all the hiring of Tim McGrath and Eugene Shin was a sign that Josh Harris would not be playing around with putting together a great coaching staff and is willing to pay big money, big money -uns, and do whatever it takes to get the right guys. Now look at us. Now look at the coaching staff we put together. Arguably one of the best coaching staffs I've seen the Burgundy of Gold ever put together in my lifetime. Again, I wasn't a, I wasn't alive to watch any of the Super Bowls that we ever went to, that we ever won, nothing. And, to, and so far, I mean, again, this is all on paper. I want to emphasize we're talking on paper. We still got to go out there and see if they can actually develop these guys, if we can actually win games on Sundays and things like that. But on paper, heading into the free agency period, this is the most excited I've ever been about a coaching staff for the Burgundy and Gold since I've been alive. And again, I think Dan Snyder being gone is the biggest reason why we were able to pull this off. Because I'm telling you right now, Adam Peters isn't coming here if Dan... Snyder is still here and then I'm pretty sure Dan Quinn and a few of the other guys that we started the hirings with probably wouldn't be here if Dan Snyder was here and or Adam Peters was not here and then everything else just fell in line after that after we got Dan Quinn he was able to pull all of this other stuff together and so I, we wouldn't be where we are right now if Dan Snyder was still our owner I'm telling you that right now even with the most cap space in the NFL even with the number two overall pick Dan Snyder still your owner you don't have this elite coaching staff so I'm very excited about our future because I'm telling you, he was really holding us back. A lot of our bad luck, a lot of that was actually more just Dan Snyder being worse than you thought, messing more things up behind the scenes than you probably thought. So, hey, man, I'm really excited about the future, and you should be too, man. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and PNA video just like this one. Also, I want to announce my fault yesterday, as in Thursday, February 15th was Daryl Green's birthday happy belated to Daryl Green man shouts out to you one of my favorite players ever growing up even as a little kid Daryl Green was like that dude to me when I was little man him Steven Davis for some reason I just was super attached to them as a kid especially back when NFL 2k used to still with well, 2k used to make NFL games not just NBA games there was an NFL 2k and I used to turn the sliders up play it on the easiest mode possible and run for 800 yards and 10 touchdowns with Steven Davis every game on the I think it was like the PS1 Either way, though, those were some two of my, like, favorite players growing up. Happy birthday to Daryl Green. Sorry for that tangent I just went on, though. Um, and also, man, I'm just really excited. I think Benjamin St. Juice, Jamin Davis, Emmanuel Forbes, all of these guys that, like, were just being underutilized, weren't being coached up the right way. I think they should be even more excited than we are about this staff coming up. Especially, shouts out to Paul Will FGP for bringing up the fact that St. Juice, Jamin Davis, and Derek Forrest will be hitting free agency next year. Like around this time next year, they will be free agents. And Dan Quinn probably is coming in at the perfect time to raise their stock and to potentially catapult their market value a little bit higher so that they can potentially get bigger contracts. So great point by Paul Will FGP bringing up the fact that, hey, man, these guys are probably even more excited than we are. But of course, let me know in the comment section how you feel about everything we discussed in this video. Please make sure you stiff arm that like button on the way out. Stiff arm the subscription.
subscription button if you're enjoying the content and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you can get a notification each and every time i release these videos because now i'm doing like two three videos a day with everything that's going on so stay tuned really appreciate y'all again i'm doing what i can i'm gonna set aside some time to try to read and reply to as many comments as possible even going back to videos like a week or two old so stay tuned please be patient with me i appreciate y'all i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out oh,